Hi, this is Ms. Fitzmaurice, and this video is an explanation of the planet Zorg problem. Um, that's on page 6 of your Unit 7 packet. Now, before you watch this video, make sure you've actually tried um, these problems. Remember that for a spring motion, we know that period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k, so that's a spring, and for a pendulum, t equals 2 pi times square root of L over g. So that's a pendulum. Alright, so now that you've actually tried the problem, A says you have a mass on a vertical spring and a pendulum that un undergoes small amplitude oscillations. On Earth, they both oscillate with a period of exactly one second. Now we take them to planet Zorg, where g is equal to four times as much as it is on Earth. So if it's 10 on Earth, we can assume g is 40 meters per second squared. And we want to know um, or I'll just write 4g e, so I know it's the gravitational acceleration of the Earth. We want to know what is the period when the mass oscillates on Zorg. Okay, so it turns out for a spring, T equals 2 pi, as we said before, square root of m over k. Okay, if mass, mass won't change, and presumably it's the same spring, so k won't change either, and if on Earth t was one second, then everything's staying the same, and our time is still one second. For part B, it's asking about the pendulum. And we know for a pendulum, that t is equal to 2 pi times square root of L over g. On planet Zorg, we have t equals 2 pi times the square root of L over 4 g e. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 4 out. Okay, if I bring it outside of the square root, I get t, and I'll say this is the earth, this is zorg. t zorg is equal to I'm taking this outside of the square root and it becomes a factor of one half times everything else 2 pi square root L over G E and so it's one half as big as it was on Earth and so the period on planet Zorg will be one half times one second which is 0.5 seconds. All right, so C says if we gave the pendulum the same angular displacement on Earth as on Zorg and release it from rest, how will the speed at its lowest point compare? So we have on Earth this pendulum, we let it go from a certain angle, and at some point it will be going towards the middle. It will be at a certain speed. And I'm going to call that speed the Earth. Okay, I know that to find this speed, I can use conservation of energy. And anytime you see a pendulum and you want the speed at the bottom, you should think about conservation of energy. So I have sigma E naught equals sigma E. And I have, at the beginning, just gravitational potential. So I have MGH equals one-half M ve squared okay and I can solve for ve of course my m's go away I can multiply both sides by 2 
and I have 2GH equals VE squared and I can take the square root of both sides and I have VE is the square root of 2GH. Now on planet Zorg, and don't forget this is G of Earth. And I'm going to label that even in my answer. Okay, so on planet Zorb, we have almost the same situation. We have this pendulum, same length, same angle. So this is the Earth, this is Zorg. And we again want to know the velocity, I'll call it Vz, at the bottom. And once again, we can use conservation of energy. So sigma E naught equals sigma E, except that since we're on planet Zorg, our gravitational energy will be mgzh, okay? That's the acceleration due to gravity on planet Zorg, and that will equal one-half mvz squared, okay? But we want to be able to compare it to the gravitational potential from the Earth, and so we know gz is 4ge, so I have, again, I'm going to just do away with my m's, and I can solve for vz, and you will see that I get almost exactly the same thing as I got before. I have vz equals the square root of 2gzh, and I know that gz is equal to 4 GE, okay, it's four times as big as the gravity on the Earth, so I can substitute that in. I have VZ equals the square root of two times four GE H. I can bring this four out of my square root, and what I end up with is VZ equals 2 times 2 GEH, remember the heights are the same, and so VZ, the bottom velocity on Zorg, is equal to 2 VE. If we wanted to write that in a nice sentence, we would write the pendulum moves twice as fast on Zorg. Alright, so D says the simple pendulum can be used in various ways to determine the local value of G. Okay, can the mass on the vertical spring be used to measure G? And so the answer is basically, if we can get g into an equation with our spring, then we can do it. And the way we can do that is if we just hang a mass without making it oscillate by the spring, and if we do that, then we know that our forces are Fs and Fg, then using Newton's second law, we can say sigma Fy equals zero, because it's just hanging, um, Fs minus F g equals zero, um, and we can say that minus k delta x is equal to mg, and we can solve for g, and g is equal to minus k delta x divided by m. Okay, you might say, oh, well, what about k? And so, how can we find this?
And the answer is make the spring oscillate. Okay, since we know t equals 2 pi square root of m over k, if we know m, and we measure the period we can find t k.